Hello guys, what's up? Today I'm here to talk to you about my English test. Okay, so... I mean, animation. Animation is a job that takes a lot of time and money, so it's very expensive to do. But if it's done with good productions and in detail, we can have amazing results. What do we need to talk about animation? We need merchandise, being a fan of it, and creativity. Okay, so let's start. In 1917, the first animated production called El Apostol was created by the Argentinian Quirino Cristiani. Years later, in 1923, Walt Disney founded the Walt Disney Company, bringing with him the first animated theater film uh, as countless films such as The Lion King, Aladdin, Cinderella and the classic shorts of Mickey and his friends. Disney was a monster in the creation of animated films, dominating this market until the 90s, where more companies emerged such as Hanna-Barbera with the Flintstones or the Jetsons and the Warner Bros. with the Looney Tunes who started his shorts in 1930, but it wasn't until the 90s that it acquired his popularity. It was in this decade where the price of making animated series were reduced in an impressive way, which was really good to them to do them in maze. This is where we come to the modern 2000. Tan, tan, tan. The most famous networks were Disney, Cartoon Network, Fox Kids and Nickelodeon. Of course, we have to highlight The Simpsons and the Midnight section of Cartoon Network Adult Swim. It was like this that many series became world famous, like The Rugrats, SpongeBob, Spider-Man, The Powerpuff Girls, Batman, Hanna-Barbera's Family, The Goof Troop, Dexter's Laboratory, The Teenage Ninja Turtles, Hey Arnold, Daria, Garfield, and Neon Genesis Evangelion, etc. It was during this time that many considered this the golden age of animation, but I don't think so. 2001 new and very good series arrived, such as The Fairy Odd Parents, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Samurai Jack, Invader Sim, Kim Possible, Jimmy Neutron, South Park, Clone Hike, The Legend of Ang, Teen Titans, and more. This was another very good time for animation, but in 2010, the newcomers from the popular Colorts University, which was founded by Walt Disney, arrived, starting with The Great Misadventures of Flapjack, a series that mixes comedy and a bit of terror. In this show, several artists meet, such as Jay Quintel, creator of Regular Show, Ben Letton Ward, creator of Adventure Time, and Alex Hirsch, creator of Gravity Falls. In addition to these new series, were created another ones became the, that became iconic in recent years, like Rick and Morty and Over the Garden Wall. By the way, economic accessibility to make to make series have been really good. In fact, we have the web series that are shows by independent creators, such as the Cyanide and Happiness Show, B and Poppy Cat, Simon's Cat, Salad Fingers, and Don Hook Me I'm Scared. This proves that people that like cartoon are inspired to talk out their own animated series, which brings me to the next point. The animated series, as we all have already reviewed and seen, are many, and people like them. That is why we have more of them every day. But what is their attractive? Maybe it's the graphic humor, maybe the saturated society, maybe the style of the scenes, maybe his characters, but in my opinion, the best animated series are those that develop into a specific thing, like Gravity Falls. After finally, definitively, the creator of the show left some clues that began a worldwide research for a statue of the billion of the series, uh, in which thousands of fans join him, or Neon Genesis Evangelion, that use his characters as a form of analysis of trauma, uh, of trauma problems and how we, people, relate with this. Also, the Midnight Godspell that mixes the podcast of a man mixed with the ingenious mind of Ben Lettonward, to give way to existential conversations while we see how the protagonist tries to escape from prison. For me, this is the greatest attraction of the animated series, although I still enjoy graphic humor. Isn't it, Uncle Grandpa?